Israel has vowed to annihilate Hamas in retribution for the deadliest attack on Jews since the Holocaust. Right. Tel Aviv has Hamas forces, tanks and other heavy armor around Gaza in its retaliatory operation. And we're on Jody Cohen reports from Ranana in Israel. Take a look. Israel said on Thursday there would be no pause in its siege of the Gaza Strip for aid or evacuations until all its hostages were freed. It has vowed to annihilate the Hamas movement that rules Gaza in retribution for the deadliest attack on civilians in Israel's history. And it's put Gaza, home to 2.3 million people, under total siege, as well as launching by far the most powerful bombing campaign in the 75-year-old Israeli-Palestinian conflict, destroying whole neighborhoods, killing more than 1,400 Palestinians and forcing hundreds of thousands to flee their homes. The International Committee of the Red Cross pleaded for fuel to be allowed in to stop overwhelmed hospitals from, quote, turning into morgues. ICRC Regional Director Fabrizio Carboni. What's certain is that if we can't get supplies in and if we can't distribute what we have inside Gaza, I wanted to say we are going toward a catastrophe, but we are already in the catastrophe. But here we are going well beyond that and the humanitarian situation will become unmanageable. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, arriving in Tel Aviv to show solidarity, told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu Washington would always be by Israel's side. But as long as America exists, you will never ever have to. We will always be there by your side. Scores of Israelis gathered in Jerusalem's Mount Herzl military cemetery on Thursday to bury their dead. According to an Israeli public broadcaster, the death toll from the Hamas attacks has passed 1,300 people. They were gunned down in their homes, on the street and at a rave. As Israel masses tanks on Gaza's border, its next move could be a ground assault. The head of Israel's military, Lieutenant General Herzl Halevi, said lessons would be drawn from the security failures around Gaza that enabled the Hamas attack. IDF chief Herzi Halevi has given his first public statement since the war began, acknowledging the failures that enabled Hamas's infiltration and mass murder on Sunday and saying that there will be an investigation and they will learn from it. But the focus now is on the war against Hamas. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken offered support from President Biden and bipartisan support for Israel, saying there's no justification for the atrocities and Israel has an obligation to defend itself. He came with three messages. Number one, to make sure that Israel has the means to defend itself in terms of aid. Number two, he's going to be working to ensure that others in the region don't join in in the fighting. And three, working with counterparts to locate and secure the release of the hostages. There are thought to be 150 hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. We know that 100 Israeli families have been informed that their missing loved ones are being held by Hamas. And Anthony Blinken says that the other hostages, or, or an unknown number of hostages, that several hostages come from 30 different countries around the world. This is Jodie Cohen for Beyond World as One.